Hey everybody, John here at Havoc Maker Studio and FMP Wargamer. So it's been a while since I've done a video. Uh, I've got a lot of things been going on in the personal and professional life that have kind of hindered me from doing the videos. I um, wanted to do some stuff in regards to Warzone Houston. It was just about two weeks ago that seemed to be a very amazing event. I was not in charge of running it this year. In fact, I was completely hands off and my partner, uh, Alan, took care of the whole thing and had a very, very good run from everything that I've heard. And even when I poked my head in on Sunday, it was a three day event. Everything looked largely positive. Everybody was smiling and having fun and uh, which is really good for me. I mean, I've been um, a part of Warzone Houston since 2017. We took one year off because of COVID, obviously 2020, and I'm glad that it happened this year. But that's not what we're talking about today. Um, so I'm back in the saddle doing videos for, obviously, Havoc Maker Studio and FMP Wargamers. And now the FMP Wargamers, I'm going to concentrate mainly on Age of Sigmar, Warhammer 40,000 and anything games workshop related because that seems to be the main focus that uh, the fans over there like. If you guys are on FMP Wargamers and you'd like to see or hear or watch other videos for other tabletop games like Marvel Christ Protocol, I'll be doing some game reviews for Spectre. Um, in the near future, possibly Infinity, and a, and a few others, let me know down in the comments. If you just want your Warhammer news, we got you covered. So, if you're not aware, uh, next week we're going to see the release of the Black Templars, all the newer models. Well, kind of. It's like a pre-preview of the Black Templars. Very similar to what happened with the Sisters of Battle about a year ago or maybe almost two years ago at any rate. Uh, so we got this fantastic box coming out and some really nice sharp rules and some additional models that are going to come out. So first let's talk about this box that goes on pre-order this set. Oops, excuse me, this Saturday. Uh, let's see what this Saturday is. The 9th of October. Awesome. So this box is going to feature... Um, a 10-man squad of uh, Primaris, uh, or it's a, well, it's a Primaris Crusader squad, so it'll have Neophytes and Initiates. Neophytes being that kind of a scout-level Primaris model, and the Initiates being the Battle Brothers in their full Mark, was that Mark 9, Mark 10 armor. Um, and... It's also going to include the new Emperor's Champion. Right now, this is going to be the only way to get the Emperor's Champion model. Look for about four to six months after this box is released. Probably it, if we follow their normal uh, release schedule. Maybe even by Christmas time, they might move things around for Christmas. But look for probably about four months or four to six months for them to release those as individuals. They might speed it up. Who knows? That also goes the same for the the new Marshall model, uh, which we'll be taking a look at here in just a moment. Now, we don't know exactly when everything's going to drop. I have a feeling we might see the rest of the stuff drop in November because I believe that's when it was scheduled to drop. November is kind of, or October is a weird uh, release month. They're just It's like a smattering of stuff. Uh, I think the only real 40K thing is going to be in November, and that's the Black Templars. That's what we're looking at right now. So this box is going to be very limited allocations or caps. They they call them cap now. We're going to cap you at two or cap you at one. It's really an allocation. It's just, I've talked about it before. It's Games Workshop pulling some Disney level stuff of trying to reassure customers like, oh, we're doing you a favor by capping you at this amount. So yeah, I mean, you're going to get be able to get two of these boxes or one of these boxes. I don't have word yet, though, on how many of these boxes we're going to have. At any rate, uh, so this box is going to be $199 U.S. Let you figure it out on your local currency if you're outside the U.S. Now, the value of this box is not super great, but it is it's still good. I would not be 
rushing out unless you really, really need to have this right now. Okay. Just because there's going to be limited allocations, you're going to be fighting tooth and nail. I would avoid the scalpers online because they are going to double or triple the price. But let's look at the value of this box. So the first thing is going to be that Crusader Squad. Uh, it's got, looks like it has the five, uh, let's see. Let's see what it has in, in that box. That looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, it looks like it has nine Crusaders plus, well, let's break it down even differently. <laughs> uh, looks like it has four Neophytes, five Initiates, so that's four of the Primaris Scout types, um, and then five of the regular Battle Brothers. And it looks like included as a member of the squad is a Sword Brethren. That might be what the Sergeant is now for that squad, because there is a Sword Brethren model included in there. I'm not sure how, that's how that's going to work. We'll find out when the supplement drops. It also, now, now those boxes are usually around $60 for a 10-man uh, box of Primaris Intercessors. So I'm going to assume that this is going to be $60 value for that box. We know that the Redemptor Dreadnought, it doesn't look like it has any additional upgrade sprues. There are there are some icon um, icons on it, but I think those are decals and not the actual physical ones. That runs for around $65. And then, of course, the Emperor's Champion and the Marshal. Uh, the character models run, range from anywhere from 35 to about 40 and it looks like Games Workshop has been moving to about $40 for the character models. So let's go with the high end, just to be on the safe side. So that puts it about 80 The data cards are usually around $25. I don't see, I don't think that's a, a special edition data cards. I think the regular run-of-the-mill data cards. Now the Codex Supplement... Now, this is going to be a little tricky, where I'm going to give you two different values. Now, normally, a Space Marine Codex supplement is about $30. Now, when they do these special covers on their regular codexes, they double the price of the codex. So, it goes from $40 to $80. Or now, I think it's still $80, even if it's a $50 codex, which all codexes have been going up. So we're looking at at least a $30 value, possibly a $60 value, okay? So that brings us to um, either $260 if we're running those at $40 value for those uh, the two character models. So $260 or $290 if uh, we do the double value for the Codex Supplement. So what that's going to save for you is about $60. You're going to save about $60, which is actually not too bad because that could get you another box of intercessors, which if you're about ready to start a brand new uh, army for the Black Templars and you're like, well, I might as well go ahead and get a either a new squad box of the the assault intercessors or regular intercessors, that's about a $60 box. Um, so now you can tack that on. So now you have those two squads in there. So awesome. And that'll save you maybe a little bit more money. You can buy it uh, or you can just ignore that and buy some upgrade sprues. If you already have a bunch of uh, Space Brain Intercessors and such, they are going to have those upgrade sprues. I'm imagining they're going to be about $30 to $35 when they come out. Um, so that's it's, it's, overall the value is not too bad. Um, I would I would run with the two hundred and sixty dollar value or overall price versus the the two ninety because even with that cover there's nothing special about it except fancy old school cover so sixty dollars or if you want to go up to ninety dollars in value uh, that's that's not too bad that's not uh, overall that's not too bad I'll I'll take that over um, anything else really. But I, I would have to say it's still not the greatest value, but it's not it's not too bad. You get everything right off the bat. But that's up for you to decide if you are interested in that or not. 
I'm going to be passing, but I know a lot of you are going to be scrambling to secure it. Now, we have gotten a little bit of a sneak peek, uh, not even really sneak peek, just, um, well, I guess it's a sneak peek, of upcoming models. Now, we've already seen the Hellbrick uh, model, the Lord High Marshal for the Black Templars and all of his new glory on his like 50 millimeter base, which looks really awesome. There's some great memes out there. It looks like there's going to be also some classic miniatures. Uh, and we've seen Games Workshop do this uh, recently with a lot of the Primaris models is getting some of those classic models or that classic artwork and transforming them into uh, new modern Primaris level models like right here. We're seeing probably I think they called this one a Castellan um, So basically a Marshall or a Castellan basically a character model uh, And it's all this one's based off some iconic very old artwork As you can see right here some John Blanche level artwork, which is always always a treat um, And then we've got these really awesome. I'm not sure we might have to I probably I have to try to rotate this slightly off screen, folks. Sorry about this. Hmm. Oh, there we go. Haha. -ha. So we got some new Sword Brethren. Now this looks like it'll be a, a plastic kit. I they pulled away from doing the fine cast and metal models. This looks pretty good so far. Um, I think these probably, even though they're going to have a lot of options, I think they're pretty much going to be monoposed. Now, what's cool here, though, is that we're getting, besides um, the Chapter Master Shrike, we're getting our first Primaris models with Lightning Claws, which is a big deal. And I mean, and look at these maces. That looks like some sort of power mace. You can see the energy coil inside. Um, plasma pistols, I really like. They have all the normal icons that you get from the black templars those yeah, and those dopey heads <laughs> bad haircuts everything about this does scream kind of a knightly order so if you are a black templar fan and you are in luck power axes hand flamers i love that they got all these belts and these chains and these oh that all that stuff i like i'm not a big fan of capes so I kind of have to look down on these models. I think capes are dated and they they just get in the way. I mean, do these people not watch The Invincibles? Or not The Invincibles, sorry. The Incredibles? No capes. Uh, so I think, uh, especially I'll tell you what, if this box is going to probably only have five in there for 50. So I'd expect that. And if you're looking at upgrading your squads to have a uh, one of these sword brethren especially if that ends up being the sergeant or the leader for the squads then buying one of these boxes to equip your current squads is probably all you're going to need so pretty exciting overall they got some great options look at all those swords and chains everywhere thunder hammer Dopey hair. Now, here's the thing that I do like, and we're going to get into some rules and tactics here in just a moment, but this upgrade sprue that they got coming is stellar for many reasons. Obviously, if you're wanting to make a whole bunch of initiates and you got a bunch of, of the Primaris bodies, that's all you need. Just pop off some arms, slap on these heads and their, their arms right here. You're set. Now, what's also cool about this is that it includes relics. I have not seen them include a relics in any of the upgrade packs so far for uh, any of the Space Marine chapters. So we got the Crusader's Helm, the Aurelian Shroud, the Skull of Cacodominus, and the Sword of Judgment. This first, uh, I'm very certain that this is the first time that we've had relics included. So that is a plus already. I imagine that with the amount of stuff in this, $35 to $40 now, now that I think about it. I think $35 probably be about the amount. So let's talk about the rules because uh, the rules are where I think it's gonna be at. So if you're not familiar, Black Templar's chapter tactics is the ability, I think it's called Righteous Zeal. So you get to reroll your advance and or charge rolls, all right? Additionally, 
Whenever you a model would suffer a mortal wound on a five up, they ignore it. Now the downside of righteous deal and being in the Black Templars is you cannot have a librarian. So you can't have a psyker in your army, which is okay because in all honesty, especially with Space Marines, a, a psyker is a it's kind of like nice to have it in your army. Cool, maybe one or two. That's awesome. But they're not a must have. They've got so much potential and so much versatility in their army from all the Primaris gear and equipment and vehicles and, and personnel to the firstborn. Those are the original space Marines and such. They have uh, the largest collection, largest assortment of units to choose from. So missing out on a psyker from the, li the librarian, eh, it's not that big of a deal. And that also opens up the ability for you to take the uh, aboard the witch secondary objective, especially obviously if your opponent has enemy psyker. So Overall, it's it's not a downfall. It's not a downside. And the ability to re-roll charges and advance rolls for an army that really kind of concentrates on getting into close combat. They love close combat. I would say that librarian missing, that's not a big deal. Now, they are including the Templar vowels. Now, um, at the... End of the read mission briefing setup. That's way back at the beginning of uh, the game. You can select one of the following Templar vows. Suffer not the unclean to live. Uphold the honor of the chapter. Abhor the witch. Destroy the witch. Accept any challenge and no matter the odds. Now, we're only going to get a sneak peek of two of these right now. The other two we might see later this week or next week. We might not see it at all until the book releases. Now, what these vows do... Until the end of the battle, all enemy units, or sorry, all units from your army with the vow ability gain the effects of the selected vow. Each vow provides a series of abilities as well as a passion. The passion is a drawback, and we're going to talk about one of these passions that some people seem to not quite understand how actions work in ninth edition. Maybe they were just looking at it for uh, a lot of people don't like space marine because like transhuman physiology and such, and they're just tired of space marines being a balanced uh, standard for for tournament play and such. So first, let's take a look at accept any challenge, no matter the odds. This one I think is it's it's kind of interesting. Now, while this unit is within engagement range of any enemy units, if a combat doctrine is active. If a combat doctrine is active, so Devastator Tactical, right? Uh, this unit uh, gains the bonuses of Assault Doctrine. And what this is going to do, besides activating Assault Doctrine for them, even if it's going on Tactical right now, uh, they get the benefits of the Assault Doctrine, plus they get plus one to attack. Now, this is really good if you didn't charge, if you've got people already stuck in, this is really good. So you're, you might be seeing this uh, possibly turn one, likely turn two, probably turn three if you've got tactical. This is a very good one to have because it gives you that bonus of shock assault if you did not already charge. Now, if you already did uh, the charge or the heroic intervention, whatever, uh, and you got the benefit of the shock assault ability, it does not stack with this. So this is really good for units that are stuck in. It gives them that extra attack. And with Primaris units already having two attacks and getting this bonus attack right here, and I believe the chain source for the Primaris, I believe they give a, an extra attack. So you're getting four attacks. Don't quote me 100%. Somebody's probably screaming at me right now. No, you don't get it. I think you do. But don't quote. Uh, it's been a while since I've looked at the chain sword for Primaris. So that's still good. Getting three attacks is still good. And the downside of this is why everybody's affected by this vow is those units that are affected by it or benefit from it do not or cannot fall back. So that's the downside of this pretty decent bonus. I think it's a really good one. I th right now it is uh, accepting challenge no matter the odds. 
If you are running a very close combat heavy army, we still don't know what Sword Brethren are going to be doing or even what the new uh, Crusader squads are capable of. But just thinking with Assault Intercessors and the Blade Guard Veterans, oh, this, that's, this is a good one for those especially that are already stuck into combat. So let's take a look at the Aboard the Witch and Destroy the Witch. So when this vow is in effect, once per battle. So this one is a little limiting. The other one is always active, but this one's a little bit limiting. So once per battle in your movement phase, if there are any enemy Psyker units in your opponent's army until the end of the phase, you add three to the move characteristics of models in this unit. So remember that they get to reroll their advances and charges. So you're going to be moving nine inches with a potential of what, 15, 15 inches. Yeah. I think it's 15 inches. And then, yeah, am I doing my math right? Plus the reroll. So you've got quite a bit of, of uh, charge range going on there. And then each time a, a model in this unit makes a melee attack against a Psyker unit, you get to reroll wound rolls of one. So I don't see this one being used too often unless you're going up against a Psyker heavy army, like probably like Eldar or uh, say Demons, possibly Chaos Space Marines. I think they run a lot or the Gene Stealer Cult. Uh, Gene Stealer Cult, if I, if I recall correctly, has a lot of Psykers in it. Um, and now... The downside of this, and this is where I've seen some discussions, we're going to call them, on some Facebook groups and a couple forums in Discord, is the passion for Aboard the Witch, Destroy the Witch. While an enemy Psyker unit is within 18 inches of this unit, this unit cannot perform any actions. So what the argument, um, in uh, Break It Down, is that they can't do anything at all if they're within 18 inches if there's a psyker within 18 inches of one of my units that are under um, the effects of this vow which makes no sense whatsoever what they're talking about and i could 100 percent be wrong here we'll probably see an faq adjusting this because they're either i'm definitely right or they're somehow right uh, what it's talking about is the actions that you can take uh, for say secondary objectives now there's those actions like i said the secondary objectives and i think there's a couple psychic actions that you can take that's what it's talking about it's not talking about your their your ability to move shoot or uh, close combat so if you're not familiar that anytime you take an action um if you when you're going to be taking an action if you've um made a normal move um, attack with a ranged weapon, did a charge, that sort of thing that negates those actions. So that's what that's talking about. I'm 99.9% positive. So right now they are looking pretty good, especially when you tack in uh, zeal. I think it's zeal of Sigismund, which when the assault doctrine, uh, remember we were talking earlier about this, uh, accept any challenge, no matter the odds. Um, while the assault doctrine is up that any, uh, let's see here, do I have it? Yes. While the assault doctrine is active. So if you have taken accepting challenge, no matter the odds, any of your units that have performed a charge or heroic intervention, unmodified hit rolls of six automatically scores a hit and successfully wounds the target. This is really good. There's a lot stacking in your favor for playing a very close combat heavy uh, Black Templar's army. Now, I'm not sure what a good makeup would be. I'm a little rusty when it comes to tactics and army compositions, but I would say a lot of Sword Brethren, Assault Intercessors, of course, uh, and Blade Guard Veterans seem like the, the go-to for this army. I could be wrong. Somebody could be screaming, like I said, at me right now saying, no, don't run those. Those are all garbage. But I think Sword Brethren, probably, depending on what they are, they might even take the place of Blade Guard Veterans. I don't know. But I think Blade Guard Veterans are a really solid unit. And toss in a chaplain in there and a close combat uh, captain or chapter master, and you are going to be wrecking a lot of face. 
All right, that's it for our preview of the Black Templars coming out. Hopefully we'll have some more, but we got some other type of news going to be coming up a little later next week. So let me know what you guys think about the Black Templars. Are you a fan of them? Are you not a fan of them? What do you think of the overall tactics? Am I wrong about the the actions, not be able to take any actions, that like they're just locked into place? Or are we talking about actions for the like secondary objectives and whatnot? At any rate, you guys have yourself a wonderful day, and I will hopefully have a new video up for you guys tomorrow. Talk to you all later.